raspberries, raspberries, raspberries. That's what we have on the homestead this year. So we're making jam and we're going to do it two ways with pectin and without. We're going to give you the recipe for both and we're going to tell you which one we preferred by the end of the video. All right, so for these two raspberry jam recipes, we're going to be using the Ball Blue Book Guide to Preserving, one of my favorite canning books, and we're going to be trying their recipe, which is pectin free. And then we're going to be trying the recipe that came in the box of our Serto pectin. Now we use crystal pectin because in a previous video, which I will link above here pertaining to cherry jelly, we did use all three methods, liquid pectin, sugar, uh, crystal pectin, and no pectin. And we found as a family, as a whole, we preferred the crystal pectin. So uh, I have not even done a recipe with these raspberries for liquid pectin because it wasn't our preferred method, but you certainly could look one of those up as well. But we're going to uh, hopefully discover which one of these is better. They both require quite a bit of sugar, but that's all right, we don't eat it all the time. So we're going to start off with the recipe that requires the pectin. Uh, basically what you need is five cups of crushed raspberries, seven cups of sugar, I know it's a lot, um, and the one package of pectin. Now I pre-measured out my sugar just to speed this along. So we're going to set that aside because you don't add that until after. So we're going to get the fruit and the pectin into the pot, get that to a boil, and then after you've been at a hard boil for two minutes, we're then going to add the sugar and bring it back up to a boil for another two minutes and then it's gonna be jarred up. This is really, really quick. I love jam for that fact. So make sure you've got your uh, water bath canner ready because you'll need that right after. Now, one thing I should mention here, as you can see, I am using frozen fruit. As you know, we've been harvesting like mad on the raspberries earlier this year and uh, frozen fruit is what we've uh, set aside already pre-measured and basically what we did was we put the fresh fruit in, crushed it down, measured it out to be, there's my thing. It always dingles right when I'm in the middle of a conversation to tell me that my oven is up to temperature. When we went to freeze this, we just took the fresh fruit, pulverized it kind of down into a measuring cup until we got to the five cups and then I just transferred it to a freezer safe dish and it works great. Uh, but you definitely want to make sure when you put it into the freezer that you really mush it all down or I would probably add an extra cup to a cup and a half over what you think you're going to need. So if the recipe calls for five cups, I would probably put six and a half in the freezer because by the time that mushes down, which is one of the wonderful things about freezing because when it uh, you take it out of the freezer and it melts, it basically is all mush anyways. All right, so you can see we have a good boil going. Now we're going to add in that seven cups of sugar, already pre-measured. Stir it in. And once this gets back to a hard boil, you basically want to let it go. The package says one minute. I always let it go for closer to two, just to be sure. Oh, it smells so good. So as you can see here, we are at a good boil. Now we're going to let this go for a minute and a half or so. And then we actually have to remove it from the heat and keep stirring it for five minutes or so. This just kind of lets it start to set so that the fruit doesn't all float to the top. So that's where we're at. All right, so we've been stirring this and letting it sort of cool for a bit. And now it's time to get it in the jars. And there we are. We ended up with nine jars out of that recipe, plus an awesome little jar for our taste test. So interestingly enough, the Serto recipe packet that comes with the uh, pectin uh, does not actually say anything about water bath canning your jams and jellies. So I guess that's your choice. I will still do this because that's what I've always done. I always water bath can my jams and jellies. So. I'm doing it 15 minutes, the same as what the no pectin recipe stated to do. We're gonna get those in there. They're gonna water bath can for 15 minutes and we're gonna get on to the next one. So this next one out of the ball canning book is very simple. Basically, it's raspberries and sugar. That's about it. I'm actually only doing a half batch of this uh, recipe because I knew the one with the pectin was going to make me more jars than we could possibly go through in a year um, since we don't actually eat toast. So jams last us a long time around here. So instead of the nine cups of fruit that it asked for, I did four and a half cups of crushed raspberries. And instead of the six cups of sugar, I'm gonna use three. And we're basically gonna get that in there and get it boiling and uh, we'll bring it back. Now, the one thing that is different about this recipe is rather than boiling it for a certain length of time, 
we have to boil it to a certain temperature, 220. So hopefully we can make that work. All right, I think we are pretty darn close. My thingy only goes to 220, so basically it's kind of when it's uh, almost there, I just let it go a little longer. Ooh, that's hot. Need a candy thermometer, I know. Woo, yeah, she's right on it. So we're gonna just let that go for one more minute, and then we're going to jar this up. One thing it does say is to remove it off the heat for a little bit and stir and skim before we jar it, so obviously we will do that. All right, so as you can see, we've taken off the lid on our water bath canner. The first batch with pectin is all finished up, and now we're gonna put in the jars of jam that we got from the second recipe. Now, I ended up, I did get six jars of jam, but I'm only gonna put five into the canner because I need to open one in order to do our taste test at the end of this video. So once again, we are uh, water bath canning these for 15 minutes. So once they get boiling, we'll start the timer. Right, so better late than never we are finally going to do this taste test as you remember I put a little bit of the leftover in one of our little containers because I didn't have enough for that jar that one was the jam that had the powdered pectin in it and then we had a jar of no pectin look at the beautiful set on this that's looking pretty good raspberries obviously have a lot of natural pectin so it's gonna really come down to taste because they both set beautifully so we're going to spread this onto some toast. Mm -hmm. Each of us are going to try it to determine which one we like best so that basically in the future we knew which kind we wanted to make. So without any further ado, we're going to test this out. All right, moment of truth. With pectin, without pectin. Virtually look the same, gorgeous red color. Basically, I did find that the one without the pectin was a little bit runnier. Once you broke that real kind of firm top, it was a bit runnier, but still thick enough to stay on the toast and not soak through. So that's pretty good in my book. But we're going to try that one first. Not going to say anything yet. Oh, man. That is really tough, really tough. I'm probably still gonna go with the pectin. Okay, conclusion for me. Without pectin is unbelievably raspberry flavored. Not as sweet, which probably means it's better for you, but it has a very non-jammy taste to me because of that. Where the pectin one, my cat thinks I've got something that's, you know, he wants. The pectin one tastes like really, really yummy, super sweet jam. <laughs> but that's just what I think. So let's see what everybody else thinks. My turn. So, pectin, no pectin. I'm going to do it the same way and we'll see what uh, I think. Who'd have thought jam taste testing involves so much concentration? So I know my answer. You're going to be the no pectin. I know it. No pectin. Because it does have that really good raspberry flavor without the sweetness. <laughs> <laughs> so exact opposite. So they're both very good. Stephanie thought they tasted very similar. I actually think they do taste quite different. In some ways, this is not very jam-like compared to this one, but I like this one better. I suppose we have the option to make both. We don't use a lot of jam anyways, so it's not that crazy to do both. They will last a long time. But anyways, hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you got something out of it and hope you try maybe making some of this jam as well and let us know which one you think is better.